As we're set to tip off game five, changing the starting lineup because of injuries. Let's go to Michelle DeFoy for that update. Hello, Michelle. Hey, Michael, yes. Boston center Kendrick Perkins is on the bench in street clothes tonight because of that strained left shoulder he suffered in game four. So Doc Rivers has put Leon Poe into the starting lineup. Poe, remember, in game two, had that 21-point performance. Just a few minutes ago, I asked Poe how his nerves were. He said he wasn't nervous in the least. And should this go beyond tonight, Mike, Poe would play again or someone would start in Perkins' place because Rivers believes he is doubtful for a game six as well. Well, Michelle, Poe did start five games during the regular season. <laughs> a little different pressure and a little different scenario, but he has played very well. An excellent role player coming off the bench now gets a chance to start. Rondo again being guarded by Kobe Bryant. Our Spanish language version of tonight's game presented by ESPN Deportes. Use the SAP button on your TV and a travel call on Paul Pierce. The officiating crew for tonight's game five and have all worked a game already in the series. Dick Pavetta, that's Kenny Maurer who worked game two. Scott Foster and Pavetta each worked game one of the series. Lamar Odom got off to such a great start in game four, but then like the rest of his teammates, very quiet in the second half. The soul gets the first points of the game. And with Perkins being out, it changes the Celtics matchup. Garnett, who's been playing Odom, is now playing Gasol. Poe's guarding Odom. And I really believe they're going to miss Kendrick Perkins. Perkins is an outstanding individual defender. Here, Garnett allows him to go to the middle. Good aggressive move by Gasol. Very good right-handed jump hook. I like the idea. It doesn't matter whether it's Perkins or Garnett. Bill Jackson's idea was to get the ball to Gasol early. He made a big-time move. That's how you get him going. Gasol has been taking some heat. They know they need him to play better. Has not played up the par in the finals. Garnett lost it. Bryant comes away. Kobe Bryant for three. That's good. And I think that's the right mentality. If you're Kobe Bryant, when you have the ball, look to be aggressive. When other guys have the basketball, they can be aggressive then. But you have to be the guy that has your foot on the pedal all night long. Radmanovich knocks down Pierce. Bryant was telling us yesterday that a key for him was right after the collapse, he had to stay up because all the young players are watching how he handled it and tried to stay positive. He's positive, but he had to lead the example. And Phil Jackson doing the same thing. Seeming like he's not that concerned, knows it's a tough situation, but they tried to stay positive for the younger guys. Well, pretty much just like in life, people are always watching. So if you're Phil Jackson and Cody Bryant, the guys are looking to see how they should respond. Shot clock down to six. Rondo gets a good look for Pierce, gets rid of Odom. Has to pass it up. Todd wanted to travel, puts it up. Shot won't go. Odom had it, lost it. And Rondo trying to come up with it. Ball knocked loose out of bounds, and the Celtics will get a new 24. And you see again, early in the game, Kobe Bryant disrupting the Celtics' flow offensively by roaming and wandering. And I like what Rondo did. Even though he missed the little runner, he was aggressive taking it to the basket. Rondo with that left ankle sprain, only played 17 minutes in game four. Throws it behind Poe. And already three turnovers in about 90 seconds for the Celtics. And any concern with a team that's fighting a situation where if they win, they have to travel for another game. Uh, the veteran teams, some say, hey, I, I don't want to do that. This Laker team has come out ready and looking forward to going back to ball. The ball inside, tipped out of bounds, still Laker ball. Of course, they came out ready in game four. It was unbelievable to watch how they were up by 24. Even the Celtics couldn't believe how badly they were being outplayed. And then that great turnaround, which in Boston is Kobe Bryant. This is that one. They were saying in Boston, it was one of the great comebacks in Boston, Boston sports history. I'm a Yankee fan. I got a tough time believing that. Even though it was a great comeback, I got a tough time believing. Here's lots of contact as a black. Here's Fisher. Fisher to the basket. He got bumped. And Kevin Garnett will be called for his first foul. And Fisher shaking up, knocking into the cameraman along the baseline. Our man Steve Angel taking a charge. The Fisher's up, as is Steve. Ooh. 
Wow. Hey, Mike, you don't have to dodge. He's not coming at you. <laughs> that was a replay. I felt You've been pain. in TV a lot, a long time. Are you kidding me, Mike? You're better than that. I'm feeling for Steve. Oh boy, Steve. Bryant. Fires away. That won't go. The odd thing about the great start for the Lakers is they had the 18-point lead at halftime. Kobe Bryant didn't have a field goal, and only three points all at the line. Allen to Garnett. And Garnett gets it to go. His outside shot has not been dropping in the finals. But he gets the first two points for Boston. Fisher lining up. Derek Fisher from three-point land. See, and I like that play by Bryant a lot more than the jab step jumper he took on the possession before. He drove it and eventually created penetration that led to the wide open shot by Fisher. Here's Bryant. Allen guarded him in the first half in game four, then Pierce in the second. Nice move. And just like that, the Lakers up by eight. No similar to the start in game four. The trick is doing it for 48 minutes. Understand the Celtics are going to fight back. And Garnett comes right back with another outside shot. That's poor defense by Gasol. Bryant has cushioned Rondo. What is he coming in to help? Bryant needs no help on Rondo. Ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Allen. Gasol at times has struggled. In fact, their interior defense has been a problem. As Perkins only gets to watch tonight. Meanwhile, the Lakers, of course, with their big man who's been out since January, Andrew Bynum, would make a difference. Ball knocked loose. I think Rondo got a piece of it. Rondo to the basket, passes up a layup, out to Pierce for three. Rondo trying to save it and gets it to Cole. Ray Allen for three. Rondo another rebound and foul by Odom. And then Odom throws a little elbow at Rondo. Tell you what, if you're Rondo, that's a shot that you have to take. This is bad defense by Rodmanovich, allowing him to get all the way to the cup. That's a wide open layup. Good pass out the open Paul Pierce, but I'll take the easy deuce as opposed to a three point. But what Rondo does best is what we just saw. He chased down loose balls. He's a very good rebounder. Foul. And free throws coming up. And Rondo played by the ankle, although the reason he didn't play as much more is because Eddie House played so well off the bench in game four. He'll go to the line. The foul is on Bryant, his first. I like the idea of putting the ball on the floor and, and keeping Kobe Bryant honest defensively. He just can't be a Roma. you got to force the issue at times. That loss the other day was the first home loss of the entire postseason for the Lakers. They had won nine straight in the playoffs, 15 overall in a row. In and out. Garnett aggressive on his defense. He's already got a foul. Gasol goes right out of pass inside. Pretty play from Gasol. Really shows you the advantage of having a guy like Gasol that can put the ball on the floor, can knock down the jump shot, and hold. He has to be aggressive and force Kevin Garnett to play deep. The lead is seven. Garnett's jumper won't go. to Gasol, pull on him. Now Gasol takes his time, left-handed, way off, ball tip, gets it again, and the foul! How the show showing some aggressiveness, and that's what the crowd wants to see. Well, has a live body to start this ball game. This is a weak first move. You gotta be stronger, but fortunately, Lamar Odom keeping the ball alive, and then Gasol, with the good hands, the catch, takes the contact and the finish. When he was acquired from Memphis in that trade in February. The team just took off. They played so well with him. Odom flourished with him. Started off his first playoff game at 36 points in game one against Denver. He played solidly the first couple of rounds. But he has been up and down in the last couple of rounds, especially here in the finals. But him coming to the Lakers almost minimized 
Bynum's injury. Now people don't even talk about that anymore, and it's a huge factor going forward for the Lakers. They're going to have the most talented front line in the NBA for years to come. Gasol gets that rebound. Gasol, only 7, 27 years old. Kobe Bryant for three. 18 to 5, reminiscent of the other night when the Lakers jumped out to the huge lead. Eight straight points. Timeout, Boston. We've been here before. After the end of the first quarter, I look up the score and I thought to myself, how did this happen? We can't pout and moat. We got to compete. I thought that we could cut it into the lead. And I, and I kept saying that. I said it at halftime. I said it in the first quarter. So I knew one thing that this team had, and that was resiliency to go out there and not give in. Instead of talking about winning, I started talking about a lot of goals. You know, let's get it to 15. Let's get it to 10. Once we saw it get to 10, under 10, with like three minutes or two minutes to go in the third quarter, we said, hey, we got a shot. Do you believe? Hey, All right, let's keep go. Fighting. When we tied it up, I was still thinking this would be a terrible game to lose now. It was, it was really gratifying at the end of the day to get the win. And it was the best win I've been a part of my whole career as a basketball player. There have been many memorable games in the Celtics' storied history. Well, at game four to the list after being up by 24, about midway through the second. A complete turnaround. Actually, it was a 20-point lead midway through the third. And the Celtics kept fighting as Eddie House has come out for the first time tonight. P.J. Brown as well. Pierce the jumper. Puts it in. And Pierce also said about that if he could draw up the way a team could win, he loved the way they won the game because guys like Posey and House added to it. It was one of those total team efforts. Oh, it's big time defensively. And then guys that were called upon from the bench were ready and made plays. Uh, travel on uh, Lamar Odom. First turnover for the Lakers. With Perkins out, to me, this is their best lineup, offensively and defensively. How's to spread the floor? P.J. Brown's link against Gasol and Odom. Right, Monovich tips it. Shot clock down to nine. Barnett, pass deflected by Odom, gets to P.J. Brown, leans inside, and misses his Gasol the rebound. The reason why I would disagree with this is their best lineup because we witnessed what James Posey did the other night. His impact stretching the floor and then defense. Bryant hits a three again. 21-7. It was 20-6 to start game four. to house Eddie house fires away and nails the three-pointer and that's why if, if, if that's Rondo that's good defense by Derek Fisher but that's Eddie house you can't afford to leave his body that far away allowing him to step into a shot he's a knockdown shooter 11 big points off the bench in game four and it's his first foul here house has bounced around the NBA eight teams in his last five years as we send it over to Michelle well, guys, uh, Doc Rivers during the last timeout said, hey, composure offensively. The ball is not moving. Everyone's trying to make their own moves instead of trusting the offense. You've got to trust the offense, get back to attacking, keep moving the ball, and trust him. Well, they need to get behind big again and <laughs> just start trusting. Very similar to the other night. Kobe Bryant, another three-pointer. 24 to 10. Bryant with 14 points. On five of eight from the field. You know, and Kurt Schilling questioned the leadership ability of Kobe Bryant. Leadership is not just talking about it as P.J. Brown knocked down. Leadership is going out and setting an example. And Kobe Bryant is doing that to stop his ball. Four and a half left here in the first. Again, the initial onslaught from the Lakers. No, but this is a different onslaught because it's a Kobe Bryant driven onslaught. Where in the first game, or in the previous game, it was everybody being involved here Bryant is making sure his teammate is riding the wave here is four three-point shot in the opening quarter and you remember when he came in and this is what I love about the guy he wasn't a great shooter he's worked extremely hard to make himself a great range shooter and as we said in the game four as you point out Jeff, he didn't have a field goal in the first half he's got four threes already 
and people try to expect him to be able to pass early and then be always in rhythm late. It doesn't work that way. It's much more difficult. Ray Allen, a good look. He nails a three. And you see the difference inside out, inside outside attack. Now you're throwing the ball out to three knockdown shooters in house in Allen and in Pierce. Sixty percent shooting for the Lakers. The hot start. Once again, Radmanovich takes a look. Rebound, Bryant back up and draws the foul. He wanted a goaltend on it. He's not going to get it, but he will get two free throws. Well, you're defending these three guys. It can't be lack, lackadaisical getting back to the man. You see Eddie House just knocked down a shot, turns it down, gets rid of the basketball, the touch pass to Allen in rip. That was poor coordination between Bryant and Radmanovich. Two guys going to one, leaving Ray Allen wide open. You see that 17 points. He's almost there already here in the first quarter. That was the lowest point total he's had in the playoffs with the poor shooting as well. Do you need to chant MVP after guys already won it? <laughs> it's affirmation. It's appreciation. One of two from the line, Ray Allen the rebound. Three and a half remaining in the first. Lakers already with 25 points. Five of seven from three-point range. Pierce to P.J. Brown. Brown gets inside, too hard. Pierce trying to battle. And Ramonovich, everybody battling for the Lakers early. Fisher to the basket, banks it in. Again, three pointer in and out, and Odom the rebound. Bryant steps up, nice pass, Radmanovic. Lakers dominating again here in the first quarter. Sharing the basketball, the ball, Odom gets the rebound, his ability to put the ball on the floor and lead the break. Ray Allen on the drive, reverse layup, can't get it to fall, PJ Brown. Finding blocked by Gasol. Odom to the basket. Lays it in. 31-15. Doc Ritter's going to use another timeout. Celtics have him right where they want him. <laughs> but Kobe Bryant off to a tremendous start. The Lakers so sharp early. You talk about his play, his ability to read situation, comes out, gets guys involved, looking to make plays, runs in transition. They set up, looking for the jump shot, unselfish play, and then we know what he can do offensively. In rhythm, stepping in the jump shots, and then slice pass from Pau Gasol, corner jump shot. Gotcha. Lakers rolling early. The NBA Finals on ABC, brought to you by McDonald's. Score something good for breakfast. Try the new McSkillet burrito only at McDonald's. Mitsubishi Motors, hop in, it's go time. And Miller Lite, the perfect combination of taste and refreshment. Nice view of Disneyland. Meanwhile, at the Staples Center, Lakers lead at 31-15. Kobe Bryant has come out with a force, and he sees this challenge as something he looks forward to. I didn't go to college, so this is kind of like my March Madness. This is the Elite Eight. So, you know, you win three, you win the whole thing. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are really, you know, uh, saying the series is over because we're down 3-1 and all sort of stuff, and I don't believe that for one second. You know, if you, if you would have put me in a room at the start of training camp and said, we'll give you three opportunities. You got three shots to win the whole thing, three games. I'd take that in a second. So, you know, this is, this is exciting. You know, we got one game to handle our business, which is Sunday, and then we'll go from there. But you better believe we're going to be ready. Just get it back to Boston. That's what Phil Jackson keeps saying over and over again, which would be the site for game six and seven. Walton 
Three-pointer won't go. Pierce the rebound. I would like to see Radmanovic get some time at the four spot to spread the floor and get the shots that Walton is getting right now as Garnett goes to the basket because I think that's been the hardest lineup for Boston to defend is when you can't help off that four spot. Garnett eight points, and that might be his second foul. Yes, it is. So he's off to a good start. But he might have to come out of the game, but remember, Doc Rivers already without Kendrick Perkins. Yet P.J. Brown gets off the bench. He's trying to signal Rivers, I'm okay, I'm okay, but the coach does not want to take a chance. And again, Jeff, you always say certain players you can leave in if they have foul trouble. But Garnett plays so hard all the time. He's a guy that can easily pick up another quick one. Right, and, and when you make plays like that, whether you get that deflection cleanly or not, those have a chance to be called much more often. And sometimes you can't tone down your aggression and still be a really good player. Garnett's passion is why he is so good. Gasol, meanwhile, off to a good start. Seven points, five boards, couple of assists as a block shot. And the Lakers lead by 14. Minute remaining. We're in another strong opening first quarter for L.A. Stolen by Vujicic on the double team. And we'll give Vujicic, Vujicic credit for that steal, but that play was set up by the pressure of Jordan Farmer in the backcourt against Eddie Howe. Celtics didn't get into their set until 13 seconds left to go on the shot clock. The Lakers defense was tremendous early in game four. As Pierce gets fouled, and he'll go to the line. They're talking about Jordan Farmer. Eddie House is not a true point guard, so you have to force the issue. Force him to pick up the basketball, and then the skip pass. Excellent defense by Vujicic. Does a great job coming up with the steal and the easy fast break late. Now, Vujicic, who is just one of nine in game four, makes his first basket off that steal. And Pierce... Knocks down the first. Well, of course, U.S. Open golf. There'll be an 18-hole playoff. No sudden death in the U.S. Open championships. And the first nine holes on ESPN tomorrow, starting at noon Eastern. Tiger Woods birdieing that 18th hole to face, force that playoff. Uh, Rocco Mediate. Another unbelievable weekend at Torrey Pines. And another day of golf. Down outside San Diego tomorrow. Incredible watching, outstanding, watching the best in the world, get it done, everybody watch. Farmar, 37 points for the Lakers here in the first quarter. They had 35 in the opening period of game four. Gasol trying to help, and a foul. Mac Rivers was calling for it, they're in the penalty. So more free throws for Paul Pierce. And a bad foul. If you're Pau Gasol, you're Pau Gasol and Luke Walton defending a pick and roll with Paul Pierce and P.J. Brown, your responsibility is to trap Paul Pierce. You can't foul him. That's two on one. You got to do it without foul. Pierce back to the line. And at halftime of game four, Pierce went to Doc Rivers. He didn't have any fouls, and he said to Doc Rivers, I want to guard Kobe Bryant. He did a tremendous job. Although Ray Allen and the rest of the team did a pretty good job in the first half when he didn't have a field goal. But it's still always about team defense with Boston. At the end of the day, you have to be able to defend. I remember in 2000 playing against the Lakers. It was overtime. Kobe Bryant was putting on the show. I walked over to Reggie Miller and the coaching staff and said, let me get him for one possession. Let me shut him down. He scored, and that was it. Reggie switched back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I do think the one benefit of Pierce on Bryant is they didn't have to double team him in the low post. Final seconds of the first quarter. Gasol adjusts nicely and a goal 10. Nine tenths of a second remaining. Lakers 65% shooting from the field. They throw up 39 points on the board. Kobe Bryant, who had 17 points in the entire game, four red hot, hitting four three-pointers.
But here at the Staples Center, Laker fans probably saying, well, we saw this last time. Can they hold the lead? Great start, however, for Los Angeles. Back in Los Angeles, the Celtics trail by 17. Doc Rivers, Kobe Bryant alone has 15. Yeah. Where can your defense be better? Well, everywhere. I, I thought our transition defense was awful, and I thought that started it out because they got everybody else involved. Kobe's going to be good. We know that. Uh, but we got to do a better job on everyone else. What about offensively? Where do you turn it up? Well, we got 22 points. You know, it's not awful, but it's tough to run when they're scoring every single time down. We get stops, we'll be able to get in transition. Thank you, Doc. Thanks. Mike. All right, Michelle. He watched his team fall behind big in game four, shooting 65%, much like the other night. A few more points. But the difference is Lamar Odom had the big first quarter scoring in game four. It's Kobe Bryant here in game five, Jeff. And you were saying during the timeout, you like this one better. Well, I do, because to me, again, you're playing Russian roulette a little bit when a guy who's a primary scorer is just being a facilitator for an entire half. To always expect him to get going is very difficult. Nice move inside. Meanwhile, Chris Mim yeah. has made an appearance. I lost this. my train of thought when I saw <laughs> Mim coming over to set the screen on the ball instead of Turia. He has not played a second in the postseason. He's been injured all year. Only played 23 games in the regular season. Pierce to the basket and gets it to go. And it's now 41-24. There's Mim. Vujicic. And fouled on the pass off. Pre-injury, I thought Mim was a very good starting center in this league. Not a top-level guy, but a guy who could score, he could shoot, he's bigger than you think, he can rebound in traffic. His ankle injury really set him back, and he's never gotten back into the rotation. Uh, the surgery back in December. He's been injured the last couple of years. He's got some skills for a big man as Vujicic. That's a two-pointer. 19-point lead. The mark is a player. Are there any Lakers saying, okay, we just need to, we need to keep going here? Is this thought of what happened in game four on their minds at all? As Pierce draws the foul. Well, it has to be. You realize that you gave a game away. Give the Celtics credit, they took it. But you cooperated on both ends of the floor. So if you're the Lakers, you have to make sure that you continue to finish this up so you give yourself a chance in Boston. And I think with this lineup on the floor, Lamar Odom should go guard Paul Pierce instead of Luke Walton. I'd put Luke Walton on Posey because Luke Walton's got great basketball IQ, but he doesn't have great lateral quickness. And with this lineup, Pierce is on the attack every possession. And Pierce, the last eight Celtic points. He's got 10 for the game. Just over a minute gone by here in the second. Lakers by 16. Tony Allen also getting some time. He's only played two minutes in the finals. That was in game four. Vujicic misses. Pierce picked up on the switch. Good hard drive and Mim with the foul. So Pierce will go to the line. As much as the Celtics think clinching a championship on the home floor would be great, they'd much rather do it tonight. However, if the Lakers win, game six will be Tuesday back at the New Garden. Our coverage kicks off 8.30 Eastern time, tip off shortly after 9. The game 6 and 7 back in Boston in the 2-3-2 format. And in the history, the 23-year history of that format, no road team has ever won game 6 and 7. Lakers, even if they win today, still have the odds against them. As Trevor Ariza checks in for Walton. If you look at the respect that Doc Rivers and the Celtics have, for the Lakers and Kobe Bryant. You understand, you're talking about facing the best player in the world. You want to end it when you have an opportunity. The Lakers are still dangerous. Bryant getting his rest. It's Vujicic, Farmar, Odom, Ariza, and again, surprisingly, Chris Mim. You see right away the adjustments made. You put in a better defender in Trevor Ariza so that he can guard 
Paul Pierce. Farmer, that one was halfway down. Ball knocked out of bounds, and the Lakers will get a new 24. Think about the people on the floor right now in the five. A reason not in the rotation. Tony Allen not in the rotation. Mim not in the rotation. P.J. Brown had retired and came back. Cassell in and out of the rotation. There are so many guys out there for both teams that really never played a significant role in the regular season in the playoffs. And now coaches are expecting them to play well here in the finals. And what it tells you is two outstanding coaches believe in the guys because they've gotten it done all year long in practice and working out prior to them. Ariza to Mim. Or there's an alternative theory. They're desperate. Chris Mim, air ball on his first shot in weeks. And Pierce is bumped by Mim. Again, Mim, he returned very late in the season, played sparingly last couple of games but not a second in the playoffs. I wonder if he was surprised when Phil Jackson <laughs> said, Mim, he was probably down there like, who? <laughs> Sam Cassell getting his first minutes. Again, if you're just tuning in, Celtics without Kendrick Perkins as a reason's call for a foul. That's going to be the fourth team foul. Perkins out with the shoulder injury. Physical play by Ariza looking to overplay. He doesn't have to work that hard. Le Lamar Odom is in your lap. He is in help position. So if you're Ariza, no reason to commit that type of foul. And those fouls are critical because right now Boston's in the penalty the rest of the quarter. The cell to Pierce. Ariza is a good defender, but Pierce, such a strength advantage, drives and gets it to go. But I don't like how he or Walton or Vujicic, for that matter, was playing it. Crowding him like that. Make him make a jump shot. Tony Allen's pass deflected out. Still Celtic ball. So in such an important game, guys like Tony Allen, who's played so sparingly in the playoffs, and Mim with his first appearance, getting some important minutes. I tell you what, if I'm Phil Jackson, I'm looking to get substitutions in. You're talking about fighting for your lives. You've already proven that you can't be trusted with a lead. I'm going with my guy. Poor defense off the inbounds. Farmar and Vujicic have some words after it. And a 19-point lead has been cut to 11. And Phil Jackson has to call timeout. Farmar and Vujicic, somebody was in the wrong spot. Well, whether they were supposed to switch this screen or not, something's got to happen. Arisa's has also got to protect the basket. That's a total team breakdown. Boston on an 8-0 run. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Get there on silent armor technology. And Paul Pierce is rolling 11 of the last Celtics 13 points, and he's already gotten to the free throw line seven times. He is absolutely just blowing by the Laker defenders, and I really don't like how they're guarding him. They're crowding him, which is leading him into penetration opportunities. Make him shoot the pull-up jump shot off the dribble. He's proven he can make it from three, and he's proven he can finish with strength around the basket. And he is going by every single Laker right now. It's just not good enough if you're the Lakers. Mark Paul Pierce, a six-time All-Star, but during these playoffs, has he elevated himself to being one of the premier guards in the league now? Well, I thought he was all, always there, to be, to be fair to Paul Pierce, because offensively, he's as good as it gets. Can, can score in bunches. You can put him in situations with ISO. You can put him on the block and can knock down the long ball. I think he stepped it up defensively. Although he said top 10, he has taken it to a brand new level in this playoff round. You talk about defending Joe Johnson, LeBron James, and then Kobe Bryant. He has been stellar. He has said that he feels he's a top 10 defender his whole career, but said when you play on losing teams, people don't think of you as a good defensive team. In six of his first nine years, the Celtics were a losing team. Odom holds the pivot foot, then throws it away. Ball knocked out of bounds. Let's send it over to Michelle. Well, during the last time out, you guys, Phil Jackson told his team he thought they were overplaying Paul Pierce. And he said, here we are. They are five for five this quarter. You've got to shut the fire down. Mike. And they're making part of this comeback with Kevin Garnett on the bench. 
Garnett with a two quick foul. Sam Cassell slowly gets to the basket, kicks it out to Allen. Allen, little push shot. And Tony Allen, a nice spark off the bench. Allen was a guard that Doc Rivers thought he was going to use more in these finals to help guard Kobe Bryant. He's a tough, hard-nosed defender. But in the conference finals, hurt his Achilles. Some thought he might not play in the playoffs. Turiath, offensive foul. Good defense once again by the Celtics. This is what the Celtics are all about. Help defense, rotating to the spot. Outstanding job by Posey, still moving. I question the offensive foul call, but good job of rotating and helping the help. He has to be there as Turiath starting up in the shooting motion. Definitely was not there in time. That was a block. Pierce, tough fall away shot, short, hold him the rebound. Now, if I'm Phil Jackson, I'm going back to Derek Fisher right now. I thought he was off to an outstanding start. I'd also get Gasol back in there and try to regain the rhythm that they had to start the game. And a foul down low. Fisher sat a good part of the collapse that happened. And Phil Jackson actually took some heat in the local L.A. media about some of his moves and questioning. And there's been talk here in L.A. that Doc Rivers is having a great series. Jackson is not when you're down 3-1. Obviously, the other coach is doing a lot of good things. Well, Phil Jackson should have taken some heat. His team is down 3-1. There's moves that he's made in the past that have worked out and looked brilliant. Leaving Derek Fisher and, and, and some of the moves he's made has not worked out, and that's why they're down 3-1. But Phil Jackson is arguably the best coach this league has ever seen. Well, Fisher does check back in with Gasol. Garnett has returned for Boston. Four on the shot clock. Gasol, good defense from Garnett, and he picks up his third foul. I said good defense. I thought he had a clean, but he's going to have to sit down again. So P.J. Brown quickly. Bounces back up. That wasn't a foul, he says. Let's take a look. Well, it's tough to tell on that. Well, Garnett gets serenaded by the Lakers crowd. Has a word for Kenny Maurer as he walks to the bench. He's done for the first half. Yeah, but Coach and I agree with this. I mean, that's three fouls for Kevin Garnett. That's no reason, in my opinion, for him to be done this entire half. I would still play him and trust that, that, that he has to make the right moves, not picking up another foul. And, and I don't think it's a foul, but I also question Garnett's judgment right there. That's a play you make with one foul or no fouls, not with two fouls, where a referee could easily distinguish that that was a foul. So... Even though it's a missed call, it was also a bad play by Kevin Garnett. Right, he, he got the ball, and if he got part of the hand, the ball was there. It shouldn't have been a foul. And with two seconds left on the shot clock, so definitely a bad play. Pierce, P.J. Brown just cleared space down there, and Pierce able to get to the basket. 15 for Pierce. But on that pick and roll, Fisher has to show. He has to give Bryant some support on that pick and roll. Kobe Bryant. And Posey the rebound. Lakers have some stretches where they look so good defensively and some stretches where they're awful defensively. Tony Allen. Inside. Misses. Knocked out of bounds. Celtic ball. Kobe Bryant trying to argue with Scott Foster. He looks at Dick Bavetta. Bavetta says, no, you got it right. Well, he's actually right. P.J. Brown is the guy that hit the ball out of bounds, so it should be Lakers basketball. 12 straight points by the Celtics. They've started their comeback a little earlier than they did in game four. Down by 19. Right now, seven point game. Pierce puts a three in, and it's a four point game. Celtics doing it again. How good has Paul Pierce been in these finals? On both ends of the floor, he has put this team on his back. Vujicic off the mark. Odom had it, lost it. Fisher right there to pick it up. And they've got to post Odom some against James Posey. Posey bodying up. Fisher looking for an opening. 
Has to force up a contested shot. He wanted to draw a foul. Excellent defense by Pierce. Lakers haven't scored in five minutes on this 15-0 run. Pierce for three. And Gasol the rebound. I think if you're Kobe Bryant, you have to find a way to get into the seams of this Celtic defense. You can't just settle on being a three-point shooter. Bryant passed too hard. He's mad at Gasol for not getting it. And a turnover. Paul Pierce has been sensational in these playoffs. He's had some huge games. And doing it once again here in game five. My goodness, you're talking about Paul Pierce finding a way to get it done. Offensively, he has made every play this half, giving his team hope, looking forward to another big time comeback. The NBA cares about the global community. Last week, a group of players and coaches traveled to Turkey for Basketball Without Borders Europe to help promote the game and promote education around the world. The Meadow Corps and Tito Turkoglu, Turkish natives, as well as Bruce Bowen, David Lee, at a Special Olympics basketball clinic. And then joined the Starkey Hearing Foundation to hold a hearing aid screening, helping dedicate a new basketball court technology center to give children a safe place to learn and play. Excellent job by the players in the NBA. As Kobe Bryant and the Lakers have once again seen a huge lead Start to disappear. Paul Pierce is a big reason why, but here, this turnover, Mark. Well, Kobe Bryant comes off the pick and roll. It's called a pick and roll. Pau Gasol, soft, rolling to the basket, looking to pop as opposed to roll. And Kobe Bryant says, hey, this is for all the marbles. You have to be aggressive and with mean intent, roll to the basket and look to finish. Pau Gasol has to make the proper adjustment. Gasol and sometimes Lamar Odom been taking a lot of heat during this NBA Finals. Itself, and Allen can't connect, so a turnover. Number five for Boston. Lakers struggling to score here in the second. After 39 points in the first, they have four here in the second, and will pass the midway point. Kobe Bryant in and out. Odom tips it to himself and gets the rebound. Goes back up strong, won't go. Gasol knocked to the ground. And it's going to be Laker ball. Crowd wants a foul. James Posey has had a terrific series, and that has nothing to do with his points. He's just a tough player. Oh, he's tough, not afraid of the moment ready to make and take shots and then defensively he gets it an outstanding individual and team defender one of two Celtics already with an NBA championship did it with the Miami Heat back in 2006 Fisher's three the soul knocked out of bounds no nice save PJ Brown Think about Doc Rivers really staying with the lineup. Ray Allen is a guy that's made big plays for him, and he finds himself still on the bench in the second quarter. Well, you look at the backcourt, Sam Cassell and Tony Allen out there. And they continue to cut into the lead. Cassell. The sole the rebound and lost it out of bounds. He felt he got bumped. But the difference that time defensively, Gasol defending P.J. Brown, he helps and he stays on Paul Pierce, forcing him to give up the basketball. If you're guarding P.J. Brown, a non-scorer, your responsibility is to be the key help guy. Posey. Sam Gasol at 38, along with Brown also 38. Can't hit that one, Gasol the rebound. D.J. Brown battling him, pushing and shoving every step of the way. Bryant to Gasol, lobs it into Odom. Odom right-handed. That ends the 15-0 run. And it's their first points in almost seven minutes. And you see the Lakers going to pretty much the same play that the Celtics have gone with. High pick and roll, and Bryant makes the play high low Gasol to Odom. Doc Rivers calls timeout. Oh, with this play, you put so much pressure on the defense because you have a home run hitter with the ball in his hands. You look to trap, 
He has to be a willing passer. Does it to Gasol. Law pass underneath the Odom. Everybody touches it. High percentage, quality possession. The NBA Finals on ABC, brought to you by Disney Pixar Wall-E in theaters June 27th, rated G. Bud Light Lime, the superior drinkability of Bud Light with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. And Toyota, moving forward. Keep moving the ball and trust. Keep moving the ball and trust. Go to your positions, operate your offense, and run your offense. You will find your way there. Well, they were finding their way early. 39 points in the first quarter, just a tremendous start. But here in the second quarter, they have really struggled. Went almost seven minutes without a point. And they've only had six points in eight minutes of the second period. So Phil Jackson, second straight game, and saw his team jump out to a huge lead. And it starts to slip away a little bit. We asked Jackson if it was the toughest loss he's ever had because it was one of the worst in franchise history, biggest collapse in finals history. And he said, as Pierce drives inside, the ones that you have a victory snatched at the last second, those are the ones that hurt the most. Do you feel the same way, Jeff? Well, first of all, he hasn't had very many losses, so he probably has a very short list of tough losses. Well, he mentioned Unlike game. Me. He mentioned game one in the 91 finals the first year he was in the finals in fact his first game he was the coach of the bulls they played the lakers and lost on a last second shot let me just say this if you have to go back 17 years <laughs> you're doing pretty good okay so but it, i think the ones that you regret are the ones that you feel you should have had and in that game they obviously should have had that game if they could have just withstood their intensity and passion and they lost it Midway through the third. Odom catches it and knocks it in, and then a whistle. And I believe it's a technical foul on Radmanovich. So Radmanovich picks up the tee. Ray Allen will shoot the technical free throw. It happened after the ball went through the basket on Odom's shot. But I think that has to be done if you're Lamar Odom, if you're Powell Gasol. You have to punish the Celtics on the offensive board because you're bigger and stronger. Let's take a look at what happened after Odom got the offensive rebound. There's Radmanovich. There it is. Well, that was easy. <laughs> but he got pushed, and so I, I don't mind that emotion. And I think that one you let go because it's just a heat of the moment and let him go. Right. Uh, Tony Allen again. Uh, that's, that's just bad defense. If you're Radmanovich, there's a thing called fake hustle. Sasha Fujicic did it against Ray Allen at the end of the last game. Make him a jump shooter. You're picking him up as Lamar Odom gets the basket and the foul. Make him a jump shooter. Don't allow him to break down your defense. So Odom with a chance for a three-point play. It's just fake hustle defense. That's bad defense. This is a blow by. Contain him, stay in front of him, and make him a jump shooter. And then on the other end, Good old-fashioned high-low gets the ball to Pau Gasol. Chris bounce pass Lamar Odom gets the basket and the contact. Those two guys working exceptionally well together. That's Gasol's fourth assist as Odom with a chance for the three-point play. But how about Tony Allen coming off the bench? He hadn't hardly played in the finals, hadn't scored, and he has six points here in the first half. So we talked about it. He's a guy that won the game during the regular season here for the Celtics. With no Rondo, Tony Allen played the point guard position and was phenomenal. That was back in December, one of his rare starts during the regular season. And I think it's going to be very interesting to see if Doc Rivers goes back to Rondo to start the second half or if he stays with what is working, playing anybody but Rondo. And I think if you're Doc Rivers, you have to start Rondo to start the second half and you look to pull him early if things aren't going well. But he's earned the right to start for the Celtics. Gasol spinning, kicks it out to Fisher. Fisher looking for an opening. Farmar, long three, way short. And it's up the call. Once again, U.S. Open Golf will have an 18-hole playoff. They finish tied at Torrey Pines today. The first nine holes will be on ESPN. Coverage starts at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. Tiger Woods and Rocco Mediate finishing all even. 
after 72 holes. Kevin Garnett stays on the bench with three fouls. And the question's being answered. He's going back to Rondo at the next dead ball. Ray Allen knocks down another three. Allen played all 48 minutes in game four. First player to do that in regulation in a finals game is Jason Kidd did it for the Nets back in 2003. Farmar comes right back. Sixth three-pointer of the first half for the Lakers. And your Kobe Bryant continue to make the right plays. Farmer shoots an air ball prior to that. Trust your teammate, makes the play, and Farmer rewards his fans. Dick Pavetta tells, tells Doc Rivers, stop it. Jack Nicholson has something to say to Pavetta. And we'll take it out of bounds. Nope, in the penalty. Well, here's Ray Allen moving off screens. Great screen by both Pierce and James Posey. And very few guys on catch and shoot plays off the baseline can balance up at the three point line. So, a technical foul on Derek Fisher. So, there's a technical foul against Fisher and Ray Allen. Now it's double technicals, which offset you don't shoot them. Allen going to shoot on the personal foul, and they're in the penalty. I think that last play where Ray Allen knocked down the jump shot, if you're, if you're Lamar Odom, that last screen being set, you have to buy Derek Fisher extra second by help. Fisher after the call going over, having something to say. Just pretty calm. For some reason, I don't look at either one of those guys like I look at Mike Tyson. <laughs> Two of the classier guys in the NBA. New Orleans back to six. Under two to play here in the second. Inside pass. Autumn. Oh, beautiful move on a gorgeous feed from Fisher. But again, going to Odom after they moved the defense on the pick and roll against the smaller James Post. Odom with nine points in this second period. Posey on the drive, nearly slips. Ball knocked loose, stolen by Farmar. Here comes Bryant. To Farmar, the no-look pass, back out. Bryant fakes a three. He already has four. Farmar for three. And Pierce the rebound. Ray Allen on the drive. Boy, a lot of contact. And it's gonna be Celtic ball. Doc Rivers upset, Ray Allen upset, the Celtic bench upset, all yelling at Dick Pavetta. See, when Allen drove, to me, one of the differences between the two teams is the Lakers go for shot blocks, the Celtics step in and take the charge. Here, Farmer flying by, deflects it, but if that's a Celtic player, he's holding his ground and taking a charge. Under a minute to play here in the second. Pierce wanted the ball. Rondo couldn't get it to him. Cozy. Bryant on Pierce. Paul Pierce, hard drive. Pass deflected. Good help defense, but P.J. Brown right there to clean it up. And coming up at half, the T-Mobile halftime report. A lot of analysis on the first half. That's a special Father's Day feature as the Celtics will get it back. The Walton's Father's Day conversation, Luke and Bill. And once again, we send our special Happy Father's Day wishes to all those, including Big Bill. Great to have him back. You know, Luke Walton, before this series, received a, uh, a call from Larry Bird wishing him luck. How about that? A Celtic calling a Laker to wish him luck before the finals. Luke said he was honored to get a call from Larry Legend. Hey, Bird ain't a Celtic or a Laker. He's a pacer. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's a Celtic. So. That's not who's paying him. <laughs> it's not always about the bucks. Yes, it is. Ask the owners of <laughs> Indy who, who, who it's about. Shot clock down to seven. Pierce, that's a three. It's good. Paul Pierce knocks it down. He's got 21 here in the first half, and it's a three-point game. 
Kobe Bryant, final seconds, puts up the shot. And that ends the first half as the Celtics come roaring back. After a poor first quarter, they outscore the Lakers 30 to 16. Once again, led by Paul Pierce. Pierce with 21 points. He played the entire first half. Good Derek Fisher, you have to get a little closer and trust the guys behind you to help. You back off of Paul Pierce, let him step in rhythm for a knockdown three points. Meanwhile, Kobe Bryant had 15, and he's with Michelle. All right, thank you, Mike. You guys had the 19-point lead once again. They've cut into it. How do you hold these guys off? Well, we got to do a better job identifying shooters. You know, obviously, Pierce getting to the basket was a big problem for us. You know, we got to stay in front of him. As far as the way Pierce is guarding you, what's making it tough for you out there, although you've had a tremendous first half? Nothing really. You know, just uh, reading their rotations and uh, see if I can get the paint, create opportunities. Thank you, Cope. Mike. All right, Michelle, you had 15 in the first quarter, didn't score in the second. Of course, the third quarter has always been the Celtics quarter in these finals. And the T-Mobile halftime report coming up. The guys will have the first half analysis. And hear from Bill and Luke on this Father's Day. It's game five of the NBA Finals. There's a kiss for dad on Father's Day. He gets a couple of them from his adorable daughters. Boston Celtics trying to end Kobe Bryant's season and win their 17th NBA championship. The Lakers try and extend this series and send it back to Boston. Halftime of game five, Lakers by three. Start moving the ball and spacing the floor and playing together. We got everything we want. Why did we start scoring in the second quarter? That's not because we got stops. You know, take care of the basketball, run your offense, and the things are right. You've got about execution. I, I'm gonna leave you with this the first season he plays defense wins this game. Let's go, Let's Let's go. go. And boy, did the Celtics play defense in that second quarter. It's game five of the NBA Finals. Boston leads it three to one. They'll try and clinch a championship tonight. They trail by three at halftime as we get set for the third quarter. But they trail by 19 in the first quarter. And for the second straight game, they came from behind. It's unbelievable what's happening here. And you look at the Lakers right now, the best offensive team in the playoffs, one of the best in the NBA all season. They go stretches they can't score. Garnett, the defensive player of the year, plays 13 seconds in the second quarter, and they can't score the Lakers with Garnett on the bench. What's going on here? Well, it's great coaching, uh, and it's been a scheme all year long. They don't just rely on one person to play defense. It's team defense. Meanwhile, the Lakers, again, another great start. And that's our Coors Light Coors track, and that's all about Kobe Bryant, who came out like a house of fire. Yeah, first quarter, you know, Bryant just had it going early in the game, and this is where... Lamar Odom is at his best, pushing the ball in transition. Does a good job finding Bryant, who touches it to Rodmanovich. But Bryant had a better balance between his game, shooting as he's knocking down four threes, scoring 15 points, and passing three assists. He's got to get back to attacking, and he should not sit out the entire second half. Meanwhile, Paul Pierce didn't sit out the entire first half and was tremendous again, Mark. Well, Paul Pierce realizing his team was down 19. They needed a, a spark on the offensive end, found a way to get it done. Dribble penetration, getting into the seams of the Lakers defense, low by of Luke Walton, taking the contact and then the basket. How about P.J. Brown? Looking like Pete Weber, the great bowler, taking the pins down, creating the lane for Paul Pierce. Celtics dominated the second quarter. He just made a bowling reference. When was the last time you went bowling? Come uh, on. I have won the bowling tournament for three of my teams. <laughs> I take pride in my bowling ability. What are you doing watching Pete Weber on a sun nice Sunday afternoon? Get outside. Get out. That's the problem with our country, right? <laughs> too much TV watching, too much in front of a computer. It's leading to childhood obesity. I just read about it. Set an example for your children. Healthy <laughs> minute of the third. And here in these finals, the third quarter has been all Celtics. They have dominated the third. They certainly did that in game four when they trailed by 18 at halftime. And then outscored them by 16, as you see there. But every third quarter has been the Celtics in this series. 
Pierce was out of bounds. But I like the move by Doc Rivers starting P.J. Brown for more length instead of Leon Pope. I think it gives them their best chance to have their normal matchup with Garnett on Odom versus him guarding Gasol. I tell you what, I've seen teams or players individuals going to a zone. Right now, Doc Rivers is in a coaching zone. He has made every right move this entire series. Foul on Paul Pierce. By the way, post started because Kendrick Perkins not playing tonight with the shoulder injury. But as Jeff mentioned, P.J. Brown starting the second half as we check in with Michelle. Well, you guys, and Tony Allen, we saw a lot of him in the first half. Not on the floor right now, but Doc Rivers gave him a lot of credit for increasing the size of his backcourt and helping to slow down Kobe Bryant. As far as Kevin Garnett's three fouls, he told him it's great to play hard, but you've also got to play smart. So that's what he's looking for for Garnett in his second half. And Odom wisely, Michelle, goes right at Garnett to start. And Garnett has to be careful. Only played just over 11 minutes in that first half. And Celtics will have it with 13 on the shot clock. Just seen some amazing turnarounds throughout these playoffs. And the Lakers in their series against the San Antonio Spurs, they were down big and came back as Ray Allen flips it in. Now it's the Celtics doing the same thing in back-to-back -back games against the Lakers. I have a problem with the Lakers right now. That's the second time they've given up a layup on a baseline out-of-bounds play on the same play. Bryant misses Garnett the rebound. Again, we said it in the first half. There are times defensively they really look sharp. Allen, the three-point won't go. And then they have stretches where they're awful. Just unfocused like that. Rondo just picks it out of Radmanovich's hands. Pierce, three-pointer in and out. Garnett the rebound. Rondo on the drive. Ray Allen, the three. Tie game. They've come back from 19 down to tie it up. And Ray Allen with 14 more points as he continues his excellent finals. An absolutely embarrassing trip defensively for the Lakers. Three wide open looks for Pierce and Allen. Kobe Bryant misfires. And you can tell a little bit of the difference personality-wise in the two teams by just looking at their benches. One bench never sits down. The other bench rarely gets up. And Kobe Bryant, ball for the personal. That's his second. Ray Allen continues just to play so well. He's their leading scorer in these finals at 20 a game, shooting 52% from the field. He's four of eight so far tonight. And certainly, if the Celtics win the title, he's a candidate for finals MVP, along with Pierce. To me, the Lakers are still making a critical mistake when Rondo penetrates. He's penetrating the pass. You cannot suck in off shooters. You have to stay at home and make him make plays. Paul Pierce, as we've talked throughout the series from Inglewood, grew up just a stone throw away from the old L.A. Forum. He's got a lot of family and friends, but he said he stayed with the team in their hotel. His mom has helped him out trying to keep everybody away. Didn't make any visits, just quickly went to see mom, and that's it. I've got a championship to win. Can't the old home week for him. How about that? The assist goes to mom. <laughs> and the Celtics off that first free throw, their first lead of the game. They trailed by 19 in the opening quarter, but once again, a huge comeback as it's going to be Laker ball. Kobe Bryant. At 15 points in the first quarter, hasn't scored since. 15. Gasol, Radmanovic doesn't fall. Garnett had it knocked out of his hands. Here comes Rondo. Celtics have the numbers if they push. Rondo to Pierce to the basket, up and under, won't go. Odom, good defense and the rebound. Ryan alley up to Gasol. Double team. Won't fall. Ryan takes it away. Gets inside, tough shot, knocks it down, and a foul. Lakers back up by one. Fisher looks hurt. Good extra effort by Kobe Bryant, chasing down the loose basketball and then getting to his spot, exploding over the contested hand of Pierce and Garnett. Derek Fisher in some discomfort right now. The foul is on. Paul Pierce, his second. Seems like the left wrist of Fisher, he's behind Kobe Bryant, holding it. 
Fisher trying to win his fourth championship. He was part of that Laker team that won the three state, three straight to start this decade. Garnett. Makes his move on Gasol inside. These are double figures. That's a heck of a move by Kevin Garnett, but if you're Power Gasol, you got to keep him in front of you, contain him, and make him a jump shot. And I think Kobe Bryant's got to be there earlier on the help off Rondo to try to disrupt Garnett's rhythm. Fisher poked away by Rondo, and still Laker ball with 11 on the shot clock. If you're going to defend Kevin Garnett on the block, make him go east-west. You can't allow him to go north-south. Head to the basket. He gets by the shoulder of Gasol, able to finish before the double team comes. Bryant, offensive foul. That's his third. And Paul Pierce continues to make defensive plays. And those are courage plays right there. You're standing in front of Kobe Bryant. How many guys in this league turn their body away from the contact and avoid it in, as you would call it, a fake hustle going up to block a shot? This Celtics team, they'll put their body in front of the ball to try to win. Lakers now with 10 turnovers. Rondo a two-pointer, knocks it down. And the Celtics by two. Good play by Paul Pierce. Wanted to keep the basketball, but the right play was to give it to Rondo. Steps into a rhythm jump. Pierce has 22 points and six assists, plus his strong defense. Gasol backs in, double team, lays it in. Good tough move from Gasol. He has 11. Nice pass inside, P.J. Brown. Fisher, pestering Allen. Allen looking for some space. Allen to Pierce. Tried to draw the foul. Good no call. This is the three. Rebound goes to Garnett. And a foul. P.J. Brown kept it alive. And Garnett draws the personal. Gasol is really having his problems down there. Well, you see the swing of the basketball. Paul Pierce wanted to fake the defense out, but look how open Rondo is. Kobe Bryant following the scouting report, making Rondo beat him from the perimeter. Doc Rivers wants his young point guard to shoot that open shot. He does and knocks it down. Hey, and I don't mean to uh, pile on Gasol, but you got to get those rebounds in traffic if you want to win right now. That's like the third time tonight he's had the ball deflected away from him in a sure rebounding situation. Game tied at 62. Four and a half gone by, third quarter. Boston Celtics following their first championship in 22 years and do it on the road. Gasol to the basket, banks it in, and a foul. Good answer from Gasol at the other end. He's got good numbers, 13 points, eight rebounds, and four assists. Well, the problem is those are good enough numbers for an average big man. Al Gasol has the ability to dominate the basketball game on both ends of the floor. With the same intensity he took that drive, he has to crash the defensive ball. And they've now changed the call, the foul on Garnett. So Garnett has four fouls. The Celtics are trying to say to Kenny Maurer, look up at the video screen, look at the replay, which obviously he's not going to do. You know, I've had referees actually do that and try to prove to you right there that it was the right call, and I liked it when they did that. Well, you know, if it, if, if it makes the difference, why not? Rondo misses, and now they've just changed it back again. So Garnett has three, and P.J. Brown has four. Nice hands from Garnett. Deflects it off the foot of Odom. Odom didn't like the pass from Radmanovic. So Garnett, only three personals. And you see the Lakers staying consistent as Kevin Garnett picks up the travel violation. Kobe Bryant still zoning the area. Phil Jackson playing the numbers. Hey, Rondo, you have to make shots. We are not going to make any adjustments. They're going to force Rondo to knock down shots. Bryant with 18, but he's 6 of 15 from the field. Started off so well. Ray Allen back on in. 0 
Rose is set to check back in for the Celtics. Odom steps up. In and out. And Kevin Garnett for rebound. Pierce gets inside to the basket, banks it in again. Paul Pierce driving at will, and Phil Jackson calls timeout. 24 points for Pierce, who has still not sat in this game. Well, the Lakers have no matchup other than Kobe Bryant for Paul Pierce. He is just blowing by every Laker defender not named Kobe Bryant. Tremendous right-hand finish, twisting to protect against the shot blockers of the Lakers. Pierce has played his entire career with the Boston Celtics now in his 10th season their first round pick back in 98 He's had his ups and his downs on the court six losing seasons He's played on some bad teams has been an all-star with big numbers also had some good teams like back in 2002 when they went to the conference finals He's had his off-the-court problems back in September of 2000. He was involved in a nightclub fight where he was stabbed 11 times but came back and played and he continues to develop as a player. Thought he might be traded this past offseason, but after they acquired Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett, he knew there was a chance to have a, a special season in Boston as Kobe Bryant. Call for an offensive foul, and that's his fourth. And Pierce has turned in, guys, without question, his most complete season. Well, on both ends of the floor, a trusted guy offensively, where he limits the amount of shot attempts he, he gets. Spreads the basketball, but defensively, this has been his best season, and especially to close out trying to win it all. He has been phenomenal, Coach. Sure has. And I, 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 the Celtics defense is phenomenal. James Posey stepping in against Kobe Bryant. Two charges in this quarter already on Bryant. Here's to Rondo. Rondo flips it up. Rondo nearly takes it away from Bryant, who takes it right back. Bryant to Odom. Five and a half remaining, third quarter. And right now, Bryant with four fouls has to make an adjustment. He has to be a jump shooter versus a driver right now. Rondo takes it from Fisher, and he'll call a hell ball. You talk about being a jump shooter. I thought when Kobe Bryant got the charge prior to him catching it a second time, Pau Gasol had a foul line jump shot. In the triangle offense, that's where Phil J Jackson has made his money. Talk about Bill Winnington, Bill Cartwright, Will Perdue. Guys are ready to knock down jump shots. Pau Gasol, Gasol is turning those shots down. Rondo and Fisher will jump at the Lakers free throw line circle. Kobe Bryant signaling over to Jackson about something. I think it's like, get me the ball every single time. And I would put him more into high pick and rolls than side pick and rolls right now. Shot clock at seven. Bryant kicks it out, Fisher. Shot clock at two, Fisher's foul, banks it in, and one. Derek Fisher knocks it down. Then gets knocked to the floor and a chance for a three-point play. Good job winning the jump by Fisher. Then good shot fake, left-handed pull-up jumper. Rondo makes contact. You never want to foul a jump shooter. Fisher with the conventional or unconventional three-point play. 68-64. Lakers back up by four after they surrendered a 19-point lead. Radmanovic to steal on a bad pass from Rondo. Bryant. Fisher, extra pass. Radmanovic. Bang! Lakers by seven. Timeout, Boston. Unlike game four, they're fighting back again, Mark. No oh, making plays, and Romanovic off of the swing by Fisher knocks down the jumper. The momentum on the Lakers side. 
The NBA Finals on ABC. Brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Verizon Wireless. Get live GameCast, personalized alerts, and exclusive commentary with ESPN MVP on VCast. Text trial to 7280 for a special five-use trial today. And Warner Brothers New Motion Picture, The Dark Knight, in theaters Friday, July 18th. Hollywood and celebrities in full swing here at the Staples Center here for game five of the NBA Finals. Anthony Kiedis from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, amongst many. Paula Abdul making an appearance. Sean Combs. Robert Downey Jr. sitting courtside. Matt Damon is a big Celtics fan. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> David Spade, Sylvester Stallone's been here throughout these games at the Staples Center. Fordham grad Denzel Washington. Got to get a Fordham mention in there. Meanwhile, 71 64, Lakers have answered back with this 11 2 run. Pierce on the drive. Again, so easy. Well, bad defense by Rodmanovich. Realize that the help is coming from the top. Your single job is not a, to not allow Paul Pierce to go baseline. He does, and he has an uncontested link. Celtics perfect play out of the timeout. Odom on the drive, stripped from behind by Posey. James Posey just makes plays. That's all he does for this team. And right now, Phil Jackson is limited. Who can guard Pierce because Bryan has four fouls? Pierce trying to draw a foul. Adjust, won't go. Odom pass to Bryan, a little dangerous. And a whistle. And a foul on Eddie House. And again, right now, if I'm Phil Jackson, Bryant can't guard him because of foul trouble. I'd put Lamar Odom on him. He is just torching Vladimir Rodmanovich and Luke Walton and every other Laker that's on him because they're making schematic mistakes, which you can't have. It's breakdowns. If, if, if I know that the help is coming from the middle, my job is to force Paul Pierce to the middle. That's that's it. It's easy defense if you follow the game plan and the strategy. So push it to the line for two. And then while we have a moment, we've obviously had such a fun time here in Los Angeles watching this great playoff. But for our broadcasting industry, it's been a difficult week with some tremendous losses with the passing of two giants, two men who were Simply the very best at what they did. Jim McKay a little over a week ago and Tim Russert this past Friday. And uh, on this Father's Day, it's a little appropriate for us to send our deepest condolences to their families because despite the fact that they were so talented at what they did, they're, they were most proud of being a great dad. And uh, again, to the families of Jim McKay and Tim Russert, we thank them for sharing, sharing them with us for all those years on television. And we send them our very, very best. And both were tremendous sports fans and wouldn't want to take anything away from the game as we're here at the finals, but we're thinking of it. So Fisher will go back to the line with just over four minutes remaining. Here in this third quarter, Lakers trying to force the series back to Boston. Fisher in double figures with 10. But during that break, Phil Jackson whistles and looks at Ratmanovic and gestures to him, are you going to play defense? We need you defensively to be locked in against Paul Pierce. Allen throws it away. Pierce takes it back, but Ratmanovic, three steals in about three seconds. Another one, four turnovers. Ray Allen on the drive to the basket, draws the contact. And he'll go to the free throw line. With 3.36 remaining, and the Laker lead is seven as we go to Michelle. Well, during the last timeout, Doc Rivers told his team, we've got to make the Celtics play against our half-court defense. We'll score every time if we do that. And then he said, we'll get it. Just keep it going. He repeated, mental toughness, mental toughness, mental toughness. It's all up here, he said, pointing to his brain. Thank you, Michelle. 
and it's the first log on NBAStore.com. Now for the best selection of Lakers and Celtics finals gear, NBAStore.com, one store, every team. <laughs> Laker fans they had a rough go of it in game four, watching their team with the biggest finals collapse in the history of the championship round. I think the billing's been a little out. There was actually some criticism last couple of days in that it wasn't a real Laker fan. Too many people who wanted to be seen here. But the crowd's been into it right from the start. Little blood rule coming into in effect here with Eddie House. So Eddie Lassert will try and patch him up. But you see Phil Jackson puts in Rudy to and takes out Brock Monaco. Trying to get the young point, the young point guard's size, competitiveness on the defensive end. I played with guys like Rodmanovich. Good enough to keep both teams in the ball game. Can do things offensively, but also can, can turn the basketball all over and make careless mistakes. Fisher. Jump shot. Way short for the foul. And it's going to be on Pierce. That's three on Paul Pierce. So nobody with five fouls. P.J. Brown has four for the Celtics, and Kobe Bryant has four for the Lakers. Bryant, again, had 15 points in the first quarter, has only three since then. They're now 10 of 14 from the line. On the floor now for the Celtics, Cassell and Allen with Pierce, Posey, and Garnett. And they had a funky lineup in the first half that worked very well. Cassell and Tony Allen was the backcourt. Garnett was on the bench, and they went on a huge run. Odom is on Pierce. Cassell. Posey back to Cassell. Quick shot. That's good. Sam Cassell, his first bucket, and it's a four point game. Good ag aggressive basketball by the Celtics. Put the ball on the floor and making plays. Posey finding the score in Cassell in rhythm. Ryan, shuffle pass deflected. And Garnett comes up with it. 14 turnovers by the Lakers. And let's face it, other than the first quarter, Kobe Bryant has played below average basketball here in the fifth game and in the last game as well. Gasol down low, blocked from behind, but a foul. Sam Gasol raises his hand, but it's going to be on Garnett. And now Garnett with four fouls. A smart move from Gasol to try and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm the one. But it didn't work. Oh, good try, but this is what you get when you push the basketball. Brian finds Gasol in a mismatch with Sam Cassell guarding him. Contact by Kevin Garnett and the correct call. I never understood that rule, hands part of the ball. Because right there he hit his hand, right? And, and so to me, it, it makes it very difficult. Why should the hand be part of the ball? They always say that. It never makes any sense to me. Well, it rarely that it, the, the timing for you to foul a guy while the ball is still in his hand and you just foul the hand. Most of the time, you can easily call it, say it's on the wrist. So I agree with you. Although it needs me to do so. <laughs> That's a first. Doc Rivers looking to get some motion offense, trying to get Ray Allen on the move. Booyah just has to be locked in defensively. Ray Allen, three-pointer. Fight for the rebound, Posey again. And he got fouled. Odom crawling over his back. That's two on Odom. And the Lakers not in the penalty with 2.16 remaining. They're one away. The coach would be the first to tell you, if we could sit over here and recognize the calls being made, then you as a player on the floor have to do the same thing and be locked in. That time, Ray Allen comes off a floppy play and stares down a knockdown jump shot. Cannot happen if you want to win the champ. I've never understand to a two guard defenders when they're guarding against Ray Allen along the baseline, getting surprised by a single double, double action. How many times does it happen in an NBA game? Pierce on the drive, kicks it out to Cassell. Sam Cassell trying to lob it into Garnett, gets it back. 
kicks it out. Ray Allen, that's a three. In and out. Garnett tips it out for a new 24. Pierce back to Allen. And Allen was out of bounds. Lakers will get it back with a six-point lead. Under two to play here in the third. Trying to keep their season alive and force the game six in Boston. I'm waiting for somebody in a white uniform to get on somebody else's case. Because right now, the Lakers are going through the motion. No sense of urgency. And the only reason the Celtics are turning it over is unforced error. Bliacic back in there. Fisher's entry pass deflected out of bounds. Give me James Posey anytime, anywhere, under any conditions. That guy laying out, getting rebounds. Whoa. That'll be Tuesday if the Lakers win tonight. Coverage starts at 8.30 Eastern, tip off shortly after 9. Cassell sits. Posey doesn't have a point, but he's had a big impact on this game. Not a lot of guys can, are able to do that. Vujicic in and out. Pierce lost the rebound to Bryant. And Posey comes in for the rebound. Really, if you're Kobe Bryant, that situation, second shot opportunity, put the ball on the floor and make a play. You have a team independent. Barnett with four fouls, single coverage on Gasol. Bryant the rebound. Puyacic for three. Gasol battling, comes down with that one, kicks it out. Fisher, open three-pointer. Garnett tipped by Gasol, out of bounds. Laker ball. So Gasol with a big rebound and a smart tip there. And I thought on Bujicic's shot, he had Derek Fisher one more pass for a better shot. Fisher Garnett's going to sit down. P.J. Brown back in. Here comes Luke Walton. There's got to be a lot of anxiety watching your son play. Vujicic. The song. Nice pass to Odom. Odom inside. Right-handed. Lakers back up by eight, final minute of the third. Bad pass and a turnover. Here's not happy. Jack is. Celtics with six turnovers here in this third quarter, 12 for the game. Some coaches would go for two for one in this situation. Interesting to see what the Lakers decide to do. Do they want an extra possession? Gasol. Good defense from P.J. Brown. Gasol tries it again, and a foul. Basket, will it count? Kenny Mauer says no. On the floor, they're in the penalty, so he'll shoot two. When you're Gasol, you have to understand the way that P.J. Brown is defending you. A lot of contact, so make a quick, sharp, aggressive move, and you will get fouled on the first one. P.J. Brown picks up his fifth. Gasol makes it a nine-point game. Then U.S. Open, the 18-0 playoff between Tiger Woods and Rocco Mie tomorrow. Coverage begins 11.30. Eastern on ESPN and ESPN360.com. 18-hole playoff at Torrey Pines. Gasol misses the second. Eddie House is back in along with Posey, Pierce, Brown, and Allen as we wind down the third. And again, I don't understand why Luke Walton is on Pierce instead of Lamar Odom. Walton now backs off. There's about a two-and-a-half-second difference between shot clock and game clock. Pierce, Posey, Allen for three at the buzzer. The shot clock expired, and now the buzzer for the third quarter. And that will end the third period. Lakers, for the first time in these finals, won the third quarter. Fourth quarter coming up. Will it be the final quarter of this NBA season? Can the Celtics come back again? 
and win their first championship in 22 years. Or will the Lakers be able to hold them off and force a game six in Boston on Tuesday? Fourth quarter coming up next. Back in Los Angeles, the L.A. Lakers with a nine-point lead. Phil Jackson, Kobe Bryant had 15 points in the first quarter, none in the second, three in the third. What do you want from him in the fourth? Well, you know, he just has to find the right space. He had some good looks, but he has to find the right spacing out there. You got a couple charges. They're starting to send him a certain direction. He's got to be able to use that. We'll find something for him. You've asked your team to be in the moment. They've got 12 minutes left. How have they responded so far? Okay, they got a little wild in the second quarter, but they were okay. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Mike. All right, Michelle. Will Jackson's Lakers, what a season it's been. Started, of course, last summer. Kobe Bryant talking about a trade, wanted out. They never traded him, could never get equal value. He started the season, and all of a sudden, young Andrew Bynum started to develop, and the Lakers were one of the early surprises. Bynum got injured, they acquired Tao Gasol, and they wound up with 57 wins. The best record in a difficult Western Conference is Pierce's foul. So it was a terrific performance for the Lakers during a regular season. It was Odom shaking up. Then they breezed through Denver, four games. Utah in six, knocked off the defending champion San Antonio Spurs in five. And many thought they were heavy favorites coming into these finals. But the Celtics took the first two games, first time in the playoffs, they trailed in the postseason. And then, of course, the crushing game four loss has them in this elimination game tonight on their home floor. Let's take a look at that Odom play as Pierce hits the first. Well, you just keep doing the wrong thing on every pick and roll. He just got it, took a bad shot. But every single time the Laker defender on Paul Pierce, he's always trying to drive away from the screen. You've got to have better body position. And it just makes me wonder if they're studying who they're guarding because they're continually making the same mistake. It's surprising how many easy baskets there have been for the Lakers and layups. Opening minute of the fourth, Farmar on the drive. Nice move, and Farmar makes it 81-72. House in there at the point to start the fourth. Pierce gets some room way off. Walton did a good job offering the shot. Odom for three. That's good. Lamar Odom from downtown. And Doc Rivers quickly calls a timeout. It's only his third three-pointer of the playoffs, but it gives the Lakers a 12-point lead. Well, again, the Lakers are very good in transition. This is semi-transition. Luke Walton, good touch pass to Lamar Odom. And Lamar, where are you taught? Never stick your tongue out at anyone. <laughs> there are heroes. There are superheroes. And then there's Hancock. You can text the last name of your choice for the T-Mobile player of the game, 38657 from any wireless phone, or go to NBA.com slash vote. Vote online. We'll have the winner at the end of tonight's game. Right now, Lakers by 12. Just over a minute. Come by here in the fourth. Pierce on the drive. Gets inside. Tough move. Now in the conference finals in game six in Detroit, the Celtics were down by 10 in the fourth quarter came back won the game and clinched the conference championship to advance to the nba finals so they've come from behind on the road after such a horrible road start in the playoffs they lost their first six road games and as the ball knocked out of bounds but they're three and two in their last five road games it's a good play by paul pierce recognizing that 
Kobe Bryant has four fouls, forces the issue, and gets him to the seat. Help has to come. The salt picks it out. Good ball movement. Farmer to the basket. Inside, banks it in. And I love that decision by Farmar to turn down what would have been a semi-contested three to drive the ball right at the rim against the small Celtics lineup. And he has the three. Garnett tips it, taken by Ray Allen. Allen left-handed, blocked by Gasol. And then he's fouled. Crowd fired up by Powell Gasol's play. But these are the plays that Powell Gasol must make. Good job coming from the weak side, said to Ray Allen. Not on my watch. Blocks the basketball, keeps it alive, comes down with it, and gets fouled. And again, he let another rebound right before that get away from him because he tried to rebound with one hand. The good rebound, he secured it and snatched it with both hands. Farmar, Fuyacic. Gasol tips it, but this time to Posey. And then Fuyacic with a silly foul on Posey. Second team foul on the Lakers. Two on Vujicic. Let's send it over to Michelle. Hey, during the last time out, Doc said, hey, we're only going to do this together, so keep moving the ball. No hero shots. Move the ball until we find the right shot. Just be aggressive and trust. Don't panic. There's plenty of time. Garnett doubled. Inside the posy. The soul comes up with a loose ball. Walton looking to push. Walton pulls up, shot rolls in. Kobe Bryant wanted an alley oop, didn't get it. But Bill proud of Luke that time, and it's 88 74, a 14 point lead. Good play by Walton, not forcing the issue, taking care of the basketball and getting to the spot. And a foul that time on Walton. And that's going to be the third team foul. Four on Walton. Last thing the Lakers want to do is put the Celtics on the line early. That's three quick team fouls. You see on a previous possession, Kobe Bryant looking for the lob pass. Luke Walton sees James Posey getting back in transition, wisely pulls up for the jump. Which it deflects it out of bounds. But this is the defense that has to be played. You see chasing down the loose ball by Walton. Wojcik out of bounds, active hands, deflection. That's where it starts. Ray Allen asking Kenny now, move him back. I got to get a little room. Now <laughs> we're explaining. Still plenty of time with nine minutes remaining. Cassell, very good post up guard, backing in against Farmar. Up and under, shot, knocks it down. No man could still post up. I'll take that defense by Farmer. Upset with himself that Cassell scored over him. He competed. Cassell just good offense. Posey pokes it out of bounds. Still Laker the ball with 16 on the shot clock. Bryant will inbound. And they're making this stretch. The Lakers extending the lead with Bryant not scoring. Fuyacic, three-pointer short. Ball tipped and taken by Fuyacic. And then a hell ball as Cassell throws him to the floor. Crowd wanted something called. Fuyacic, a little lack in there. And then Farmar kind of pat him said, get up. Well, something did get called, the jump ball. Fuyacic trying to make all the actors and actresses around this arena crowd. But this is nothing but a jump ball. Wraps the ball up, tries the strong arms, Sam Cassell, correct call, jump ball, Booyah Chick, Cassell. Yeah, Cassell's trying to wrestle it away from him. Man, if you get thrown down by a 38 year old, you got to get a new strength program. This <laughs> <laughs> was setting. The team who. Whose basket the jump ball is at gets to add that one player right directly behind there where Gasol is, but Garnett tips it away. Booyah chips though, knocks it out of Pierce's hands. Gasol back to Bryant. Booyah chips for three. It's oh, in and out. That one halfway down. And it's still Laker ball. Booyah chips had a good look. 
with him any look that he thinks is a good look. Hey, he's rivaling to sell for shots per minute. He's two for ten after a one for nine performance in game four. Played great in game three, but has struggled finding the rim. Farmar left-handed. Falls off and Garnett the rebound. Lakers by a dozen. Cassell draws the foul, banks it in. Farmar can't believe the call, but Cassell comes right back. And he has a chance for a three-point play. Sam Cassell so good at selling the shot fake. Gets the young fella in the air, takes the contact, and knocks down the jumper and the Celtic bench. Loving the play by the 38-year-old veteran. Cassell in his rookie year made big shots in the NBA Finals with the Rockets. That was back in 94 when they beat the Knicks in seven games. Now at 38, trying to win his third championship ring. Signed late in the season after being let go by the Clippers. Nine-point game, just under eight to play. Walking to Bryant. Kobe Bryant drills it. 90 to 79. Bryant's first points here of the fourth hasn't scored much since that opening period when he had 15. Only five since. Cassell again. Garnett the rebound. Cassell drives inside, lays it in. Sam Cassell fearless out there. And he has the last seven Celtic points. He's a guy that understands when he's feeling it, he's going to look for his offense. Aggressive in this fourth quarter. Gasol backs in, left-handed, short. And Garnett with another rebound. Here's 11. Here's my problem. That's a weak move when you're trying to take this series back to Boston. KG in foul trouble. Make a big-time aggressive move. Here's to the cell. Allen. Garnett tries to draw contact. Good help defense from Walton. Six and a half to play. Lakers still by nine. Bryant jump shot. Short. And Boston Celtics trying to come from behind again as Walton calls for a foul. With 6.22 remaining. And that's their 15 fouls and now free throws. Bad, bad foul that time. That's what we're talking about. Breakdowns defensively with commitment. If you're Luke Walton, why are you picking up Paul Pierce at the half court mark? That's fake hustle defense. Get back and be in position where you give your team a chance to help you. This is bad defense. Take down. Now Pierce goes to the line. The clock is not the Celtics' friend. It stopped, and he has two free shots. I'm just trying to figure out sometimes what these guys individually, defensively, are thinking about. What is going on in their mind that they're doing these fouling away from the ball in the penalty, getting blown by by the same breakdown? Well, we have a second reminder. Two weeks, biggest splash of the summer comes to ABC. Each week, 24 players take on the world's most outrageous obstacle course. Wipeout, June 24th at 8, 7 Central on ABC. And I like this move by Phil Jackson. Enough with the experimenting. Lamar Odom, Derek Fisher, guys you can trust, guys that have been in crucial moments. Put them on the floor because this is do or die time. 6.22 remaining, perhaps for the Celtics in their first championship in 22 years. Can they come from behind on the road again? They were down 19 in the first quarter of this game, came back and took the lead. They were down 14 earlier in this period, and now back within seven as we approach the midway point. Bryant. Barnett picks him up. Now Allen back on him. Kobe Bryant deflected. Knocked loose out of bounds. Celtic ball. Pierce, another good defensive play. 
great defensive teams are able to do multiple things. That time, Paul Pierce stopped the penetration of Bryant and gets a hand in the passing lane, deflecting the ball. And Bryant was driving the pass instead of driving the score. Pierce on the drive, falls down, gets it out, Posey for three. It's good, James Posey from downtown, and it's a four-point game. And still over five and a half remaining. Celtics keep fighting back. Now with a 12-2 run. Fisher, nice move. Shot won't go. And Odom can't control it. Boston ball will have timeout. Big shot. Well, offense by accident sometimes is your best offense. Here, Pierce trying to run pick and roll, stumbles, bumbles, but goes to the floor. And here's James Posey, right place, right time, knocks down a three. Celtics have cut it to four. The NBA Finals on ABC, brought to you by GMC, we are professional grade. And Hancock, starring Will Smith, in theaters July 2nd, rated PG-13. Play the game. We can win this game. It's our game. Mental toughness. Mental toughness. Doc Rivers talking about mental toughness. He would love to win the championship tonight on Father's Day. It would mean so much to him because mental toughness is what he got from his father, Grady, who's a Chicago policeman for over 30 years, but passed away earlier in this season. Rivers obviously very close that he never really got a chance to mourn. He was asked about it the other day at a press conference, got very emotional. But his father's what got him through last year when the team only won 24 games, one of the worst seasons in franchise history. Father kept telling him, don't quit, don't quit. Pierce goes to the basket, draws the foul, and he'll shoot two. And it's been a team that has certainly gone by that example of not quitting. They certainly showed it in game four. They've done it here at, again in game five. The Celtic team that won 66 games this year, the single greatest turnaround in NBA history. 24 wins to 66. So now on the verge of a championship. Down by four with 5.16 remaining. Pierce having another extraordinary game. 33 points, seven assists. Now you listen to Doc Rivers on his Wyatt in the huddle, in the locker room. This guy was a preacher I would join his church. Has done an outstanding job of getting his message across. And Allen told us the other day, in terms of communication skills, as good as he's ever seen. 14 to two runs. Lakers lead cut to two once again. Still over five minutes remaining. Gasol harassing Farmar. Gasol got away with a little shuffle. Fisher too strong and Cassell the rebound. Listen, this ball's got to be in Kobe Bryant's hands right now, and it's got to be in Lamar Odom's hands against Posey. Anything less is not good enough. Pierce with a turnover, but Fisher was out of bounds. And the Celtics will get it. And Doc Rivers says, hey, that's not the play I want. He wants pick and roll with Pierce and Garnett and allow Pierce to make the decisions off of that. So a new 24. Sam Cassell in there at crunch time. Pierce to the basket, spinning, back out, Garnett, open jumper, it's good. Now the Celtics are about to tie it at 90 after trailing by 14 here in the fourth quarter. I think defending that play of your power to soul, close the gap, get to Paul Pierce before he gets to you. Now Pierce picks up his fourth foul, and that's their second team foul. You have to understand what they're trying to do. If your power to soul trap Paul Pierce initially, forcing him to get rid of the basketball. Pierce goes before him, defense collapsed, and gets the ball to KG. Gasol again. Now Gasol backs in. Up and under. Nice move. 
15 for Gasol. Lakers back up by two. Ray Allen, under four to play. Allen lobs it into Garnett, stripped and fouled by Farmer. And Kevin Garnett will go to the line for the first time tonight. Kobe Bryant waved his own playoff and gave it to Gasol. Good, strong, hard move to the middle. Could have been a three-point play, but if you look at it, the Lakers are having to take tougher shots than the Celtics. The Celtics right now on a simple Pierce Garnett high pick and roll are getting great shots seemingly every trip down the floor. Garnett trying to end it tonight, misses that free throw. If he fails to do so, the series returns to Boston. Game six Tuesday on ABC. Coverage starts 8.30 Eastern. And then if the game seven, that'll be Thursday. Back at the TD Back North Garden. Well, the Celtics, after the early road struggles, trying to clinch on the road. Garnett one for two, and it's a one-point game. Farmar and Fisher, the backboard right now for the Lakers. Pierce, ball denial on Bryant, trying to draw a foul. Bryant picks up his dribble. Shot clock at seven and a foul on Garnett, away from the ball, and that's his fifth. It's only the 13th foul, but now Garnett with five personals. to inbound. Odom. Kobe Bryant. Foul on entry pass. It's Pierce. That's five on Pierce. There's still not the penalty the next one. So Pierce and Garnett each with five fouls. Kobe Bryant had 15 points in the first quarter, only five cents. And Phil Jackson will call a timeout. 3.31 remaining, fourth quarter. Game five of the NBA Finals. Kobe Bryant and the Lakers trying to force a game six. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Get there on silent armor technology. 3.31 remaining, fourth quarter in Los Angeles. Game five of the NBA Finals. Paul Pierce has been magnificent again. 34 points, eight assists, as the Celtics have overcome a 19-point first quarter deficit. Kobe Bryant came out like a house of fire in the first quarter, but since the first, he's only one of eight from the field. And the Celtics once again, down 14 early in the fourth, have come back. That's our Verizon Wireless game track. And guys, Kobe Bryant, he struggled in game four, and since the first quarter, can't get his offense going. What's going on with him? Oh, you're right. I think the, the strength of Paul Pierce has bothered him. That's why I don't understand the adjustment that Doc Rivers has made. Now Pierce is on Fisher, and Ray Allen is on Kobe Bryant. Well, Pierce has the five fouls. Doesn't want to make sure he gets a knocked out of the game. Bryant, tough pass to Odom, and Odom's foul. Great look from Bryant, and Odom will shoot two. And I even think with the five fouls, I'm still keeping Paul Pierce on Kobe Bryant because not just his defense, but the help behind him is doing a good job containing Bryant. Kobe Bryant has a small Ray Allen on, able to get to his spot. Help has to come and finds Lamar Odom underneath. Contact and going to the line. And that's a pretty good foul by Posey. That would have been an easy layup for Odom. Oh, yeah. Give me some James Posey. That's all I got to say. If I'm a coach, I know he's a knife fighter. He's not going to shrink from the competition. You watch him when he's matched up against Bryant. There's no, like, trying to befriend Kobe Bryant. He's here to win. And I like it also, while Lamar Odom shooting a foul shot, Pierce and Bryant getting into it verbally. Two guys ready to raise the stakes. They played a lot in the offseason for pick up ball here in the summer in L.A. They talked about who yeah, might be traded. they Jack in those games. No, that doesn't count. Yeah, I'm telling you what, we had a heck of a team. O.J. Mayo, Garnett, Sam Cassell, and my son and myself ran the court. Pierce knocked away, picked up by Fisher. 
Fisher trying to draw the foul, and he does. And Fisher will shoot two with 3.07 remaining, and the Lakers by three. Good defensive play by the Lakers. Derek Fisher comes up with the basketball, pushes it off to the races, and Coach talked about the effort of James Posey. Chases down, doesn't give up on the play, does not allow Derek Fisher to get the three-point play. Won't show up in the stat sheet, but that's a big play by Posey. Fisher with 11 points. This is a free throw. He's an excellent free throw shooter, and that keeps the lead at three. See, what Mark just said, though, is so true. If that's an and one, right, and Posey gives up on the play or stops at the whistle, it's a far different outcome. The, there, are very, there are a lot of good competitors in the NBA. There are few great competitors. James Posey is a great competitor. Three minutes remaining. Four-point game. Pierce on the drive to the basket all the way, and he draws the foul. As again, the help comes late. And Pierce back to the free throw line where he's already taken 15 free throws. So this is really why I felt the Lakers got a good break not facing the New Orleans Hornets in the playoffs. They cannot play against pick and roll basketball. Paul Pierce able to break them down. Imagine this was Chris Paul. This is Paul Pierce getting into the seams of your defense. Going to the line. Every big play has occurred off of pick and roll. And I'm going to tell you a huge difference in the team. Right there, Jordan Farmer could have squared Paul Pierce up and taken a charge, or at least tried to. He sidestepped and fouled him. A huge difference between a Celtics team ready to put their body on the line and a Lakers team half-stepping when the ball comes into the lane. Celtics have been the best defensive team all season long. Meanwhile, Pierce has played the entire game. And what a game it's been for him. He has had such huge moments in this postseason. Played great in the clincher in Detroit against the Pistons. Had that 41 points in game seven against the Cavaliers. And having another extraordinary game with 36. Ball kicked, so they'll reset the shot clock to 14. Well, again, poor pick and roll initial coverage, but right here, Put your body in front of the ball. Be early, not late. That's just bad defense. Gasol. Garnett's got five fouls. Gasol inside, trying to find room. Flips it up. Shot won't go. Garnett, the rebound is 12. And then fouled by Gasol. And free throws coming up for Boston. It's only the third on Gasol. So one on one, needing a basket, trying to get the foul on Kevin Garnett. Fading away, jump hook, and then this is not a smart play over the back of Garnett, allowing him to go to the line for two. Not much of a foul there, but Garnett will shoot. Kevin Garnett has, they've said all season long, changed the culture of the Celtics. You talked about the defense, Jeff. And he has led that team defense all season, but misses a free throw here with 231 for man. You know, I've been as vocal, probably the most vocal guy comparing Kobe Bryant with Michael Jordan. And I will say it right now, with 231 left to go in your season, Michael Jordan would not live with Kyle Gasol making the play. Kobe Bryant has to be the facilitator to close out this ball. Gasol, the rebound, Garnett missing the free throw. One of four here in the fourth quarter for Garnett from the line. 95-93, Lakers by two. Bryant draws the foul on the pass. And the Celtics in the penalty. Posey and Odom talking. Now, why would they get fouled in this? Because Posey fouls after the whistle on every play. Now, as a coach, I love it. But I can see how a player would take exception to it. And I'm not talking once in a while. This guy finishes people off after the whistle. So the whistle took place there. And Posey's not letting anybody have anything easy. But to take a chance on a technical foul, giving away a point with your season on the line, a championship on the line, you never know if the officials will see the second act and call the technical on you if you're responding to somebody. Bryant, meanwhile, the free throw. 
Three points here in the fourth quarter for Kobe Bryant. Two big free throws there, and the Lakers back up by four. Bryant guarding Pierce. Pierce goes right at Gasol, puts up the shot, misses. Garnett's tip won't go. Pierce on the follow. Rebound, Odom. Under two minutes remaining. Lakers trying to hang on. They're on their feet at the Staples Center. Shot clock at six. Bryant puts up the shot. Short. Rebound, Gasol back out to Fisher on a new 24. Gasol has made some big plays, including 12 rebounds. Bryant just waiting. Lord Odom got in the way. Three on the shot clock. It's a three. In and out. Rebound, Odom tips it. And a loose ball foul is going to go against the Lakers. Odom's got to be careful as he picks up the personal. That's his third, and the Celtics will shoot free throws. Kobe Bryant now 7 for 20 from the field and 2 for 12 since the first quarter. Going over to Phil Jackson discussing he does not want to pick and roll because if he gets into a pick and roll situation, the Celtics are going to trap and force him to get rid of the basketball. He'd much rather isolate one-on-one -on -one with Ray Allen. This will be Pierce's 18th and 19th free throw of the game. 37 for Pierce. And Tony Allen comes in for defensive purposes. Well, it's Tony Allen and Ray Allen out there with Pierce, Garnett, and Posey. Paul Pierce cementing himself as one of the all-time great Celtics with his performance in this postseason. Hits the second free throw, and it's back to two. The Celtics defense has been magnificent on how they've defended Kobe Bryant. Under a minute to play. Bryant. Kicks it out to Gasol. Gasol out to Fisher. Fisher sets. It's a three. Won't go. Odom tips it. Pierce with the rebound. And gets out of the pack. Celtics with a chance to tie or take the lead. I don't like the shots the Lakers are getting. Ball knocked away by Bryant. Here he goes down the other end. Puts it in. Lakers by four. And timeout Boston. A huge steal. His fifth steal of the game, Mark. You need a play, season on the line. Kobe Bryant comes up with the steal, deflects the basketball. Mama, there goes that man. Bryant finishes at the rim. A little breathing room for the Lakers as they try and force the game six on Tuesday. Lakers with a four-point lead, 37.4 seconds remaining. It's Celtics ball. But a big defensive play from Kobe Bryant with Steele giving him the advantage. Well, this is just a home run gamble. Frankly, that paid off and gave him this breathing room. But if you're the Celtics right now, you definitely want to go two for one. You got 37.4. You want to get a shot up within seven seconds right here. And you see what the Celtics are doing, spreading the flow and knockdown shooters. Pierce, expect him to have the basketball. You see Posey, House, and Allen. They're going to be on the perimeter. And with Pierce inbounding the ball, expect him to get a handoff back from Garnett right from the inbounds pass. Both teams still have multiple timeouts, neither with a foul to give. Eddie House's return. Ray Allen trying to get free. On the drive inside layup bank shot won't go Garnett's tip misses Odom the rebound Odom looking
Knocked away out of bounds. And it's still Laker ball. And Phil Jackson is going to call a timeout. So Jackson calls one of his three remaining timeouts. Lakers defended that play well. Well, this is surprising that they went away from Pierce and went to Ray Allen. Garnett had a chance to tip it in, and now they're double-teaming Odom. Lakers only have four seconds to get it across half court. 26.8 seconds remaining in the fourth. The Lakers 99, Celtics 95, U.S. Open, the 18-hole playoff tomorrow on ESPN. Meanwhile, Odom will inbound. Fisher, Bryant, Farmer, and Gasol, and they got to advance the ball on that timeout. They're not worried about the eight-second violation. But, Jeff, they need to foul right away, correct? Correct. If it was only a one-possession game, they wouldn't. Since it's a two-possession game, you've got to foul right away. Fisher trying to come up with a steal first. And instead, the foul with 24.8 remaining, and Fisher will go to the line. Smart play by Fisher also. Rather than being on his heels, allowing the double team to come, splits it aggressively. Forces the contact, not allowing him to get stripped. You see Fisher from the line, excellent for his career. He's over 80%. And huge free throws right here. Lakers hit their free throws. They're winning this game. If not, they open the door. P.J. Brown comes in. Want to make sure they get a rebound on a miss. Fisher's missed three free throws, five of eight. Scott Foster, Kenny Maurer, and Vic Pavetta over there checking something at the scores table. I believe Tony Allen left the floor, and now they wanted him to stay on the floor for the defensive rebound and to see if it was a legal substitution. Fisher. Huge free throw right here. And that makes it a five point game. Now, Doc Rivers will use one of his two remaining timeouts. Celtics down to one. With 24.8 seconds remaining. Obviously, a two possession game. Well, the Lakers, if they hold on, there'll be a game six coming up on Tuesday back in Boston game six and seven the two three two format Lakers you know they tried to make will, will try to make history by becoming the first team in NBA Finals history to overcome a 3-1 deficit it's never been done before in the finals it's only been done eight times overall very difficult and no team has ever won both road games in this 2-3-2 format in game six and seven but obviously all they needed Jeff was to win this one and get the series back to Boston yeah but I don't like their pick and roll defense unless their defensive mentality and scheme changes for the better they're not winning on the road I totally agree you got to give yourself a chance this defense that they play tonight is not going to work in Boston of course, the Celtics have only lost one game on their home floor in the playoffs. That was one to Detroit. Lakers losing the first two games of the series in Boston. Posey will inbound. House back in with Allen, Pierce, Garnett. House, quick three, it's up. Won't go. Gasol the rebound, and he's fouled. Nope, they don't call it. He got hit. Here comes Bryant. They have the foul, and there's a whistle. And Ray Allen has just fouled out. But with Hoffman on the defense, and, and fresh out of the on camera, Eddie House, one of the best shooters in the game, a knockdown shooter off an out of bounds set off of a timeout, gets a wide open look. That's inexcusable when you're trying to win it all. And Phil Jackson now talking to his young point guard, Farmer, trying to explain the mistake. So Bryant will go to the line. And can make it a three possession game as the Lakers looking to recover from what was the biggest collapse in NBA Finals history. After leading by 24 in game four, they lose. They jumped out early tonight, led by as many as 19, lost that lead as well, but were able to come back. 
And as Bryant makes it a six-point game. And I also think it's imperative for the Lakers to win in Boston to find a way to get Kobe Bryant better shots against a very good defensive team. And you're not going to get him better, better shots in a 1-4 set, isolating from the top. The Celtics are too good defensively. And the Celtics will call their final timeout. They can advance the ball, so it's still a two-possession game with 15.4 remaining. Doc Rivers calls a timeout, and now he is out of timeouts. A big play in this game on the defensive end for the Lakers. It's ironic they had some poor defensive stretches, but this steal, when the Celtics had a chance to tie the game on that possession, but off the steal and the dunk, it was back to four. I'm going to tell you, this play defensively by Bryant, which you could argue is a foul, and Garnett missing both free throws, that was their two best defensive possessions in the fourth quarter. And that's not good enough. You're not winning, like, on a Olay type of steal and hope that guys miss free throws. The defense... If you go back and you're a Laker player and you're honest with yourself, you're going to say, hey, this isn't the best I could have given in this game. I could have given more to the cause. But it might be enough with 16.4 remaining. Celtics have to go for the three years. Yeah, without timeouts, you got to get a three-point shot. Posey looking. Garnett sets the screen. House comes free. House left corner three is up. It's good. House knocks it down. It's a three-point game. 14.3 remaining. Almost, almost a turnover as Bryant gets it to Fisher. And Fisher is fouled. That was close to being a travel, close to being a turnover. Instead, Fisher will go to the line with nine seconds remaining. Oh, this is, I mean, this will, I, I've been around coach long enough. This is making him sick. Eddie House once again comes off, gets to the corner, wide open look, and then about to turn the basketball over. Hey, you got you to gotta close out ball games better, and the Lakers are not doing that. Although, give credit to the scrappy Celtics. They continue to fight. And as Fisher hits the free throw. I know you think we're going too negative, Mike. I can tell by your positive remarks, but I'm telling you from a coaching and playing perspective, if you want to win it all and you're the Lakers, you're disappointed after this game that this is all you could do. When, when you're in the fourth quarter, you've got to find a way to summon up more resolve than they've shown right here. And I think if you're not satisfied, if you think that you've gotten it done, you're lying to yourself. When you look at the film and look at the breakdowns on both ends, you are lying to yourself. You're fortunate to go back to Boston. But it, that's all they needed tonight was just to win and send the series to Boston. Yeah, but they need a totally different level of resolve to actually win in Boston. Off the inbound, Fisher the steal, and that will do it. The series is going back to Boston as the Lakers survive another furious comeback by the Celtics. It certainly was ugly at times, but the Lakers do get the victory. And Boston's lead in this best of seven series is three to two. Paul Pierce, 38 points, magnificent, but not enough. As they'll head back to the East Coast and the new garden in Boston. And the crowd applauding outside here at the Staples Center because this is the last time they'll see their team play this season. And they get to see the victory. Kobe Bryant with a big steal. You see the crowd now getting a thanks to the crowd who's here. The players applauding, saying thank you for your support. Michelle DeFoy trying to kick Kobe Bryant. We'll get him in a second. Let's go, Michelle. All right, thanks. Grateful to this crowd that may have carried them through. Kobe, you guys get the win. Uh, probably the turning point in this fourth quarter came when the Celtics were trying to tie it. They were down two. You had a steal. Describe what happened next. Well, you know, I was kind of reading the play, and uh, I was able to get my hands on the ball and got out and got a dunk. And that pretty much turned the, seemed to turn the tide. The way you guys finished out the quarter, however, 
you got the win, but is this the kind of performance that can win on the road two games in a row? Probably not. We'll probably have to play better. Um, no, but still in all, we're doing some positive things, and the important thing is to keep those guys away from the line. I mean, they get to the free throw line all day long, and that gets them back in the game. Now, heading back to Boston, you know the Celtics are very good at home. What makes this team confident that they can do what's never been done before and make NBA history? Because, you know, we won, we won on the road before. We played in tough environments before. We shot the ball like crap in Beantown the last two times, so we're due. Good luck. Thanks, Kobe. Thank you. Mike? All right, Michelle. Uh, player of the game vote presented by T-Mobile. The fans selecting Kobe Bryant as tonight's player of the game. He struggled shooting again, but made a big steal. And Bryant with 25 points as the Lakers survive and still have a chance at another championship. Although it'll be still an uphill battle as the series goes back to Boston. Game six Tuesday on ABC. Our coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern, tip off shortly after 9. And if the Lakers can win that one, we'll go back for a game seven in Boston. Kobe Bryant with a happy Father's Day present, some kisses from his girls, and a victory for the Lakers as they win it 103 to 98. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now, except on the West Coast, stay tuned for your late local news over most of these ABC stations. For complete post-game coverage of tonight's game, go to ESPN and Sports Center. So for Jeff Van Gundy, Mark Jackson, Michelle Tafoya, and our entire terrific ABC crew, this is Mike Green saying so long from Los Angeles. You're watching ABC, home of the NBA Finals. We'll see you in Boston.